Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com. Welcome to the Headphone Show and today we're going to take a look at the SMSL SU9 digital to analog converter. This is a balanced ESS based DAC that comes in right at around $440. Let's take a look. Now just before we get started, I want to mention that this was sent over to me for evaluation by Shenzhen Audio and they did not pay me one way or the other, but I want to give a big thank you to Shenzhen Audio for sending this in for a review. Now before going into the sound, I should mention what all this has. Uh, just so you guys know here, this, ha this is a Bluetooth connection here, so you can connect it with your phone. You got your balance left and right, and then you got your RCA as well. USB input, you can do AES and optical as well. Now if anybody's wondering what the chip is in here, it's the ES9038 Pro. Um, but to me, the big question is more about, you know, implementation and, you know, all that stuff and how does it actually sound. And on that subject, I should also mention that while this does measure well, I don't really care that much about, you know, DAC measurements, you know, past a certain point because so much of this is beyond the audible threshold. So really what I'm giving you here is my subjective take on this and how this sounds to me. Now, as far as features goes, this has all of the stuff that you would expect like DSD and MQA and all of the rest of that stuff that I personally don't really care that much about, but you might and so it's worth noting that this, this can do it. You got your lovely high-res audio sticker on the top there <laughs> for anybody who cares. But there are a number of features on this deck that I think are also worth mentioning. You do have a number of filters here. You have a brick wall. You have an appetizing filter. Uh, you know, there's a number of those ones there. In my experience with this, they don't make that big of a difference. You know, you can... You can play around with the filters and then, you know, convince yourself that there is a, a difference in one way or another for how it sounds, but it's a very minimal one at best. Um, but uh, that said, it does have them. So if you care about that kind of stuff, you can play around with this very easily. And it's very easy to change. The menu system in here is actually fantastic. You just use the multi button here. And I think this is just a really simple and easy to use DAC. But the more interesting aspect of this to some people, I think, is going to be the sound color function. Now, this is something that I don't see that frequently in DACs because usually you want the DACs to be as transparent as possible and not really be the thing that's changing the sound all that much. But of course, that goes back to the you know question about do we want things to just measure well or where's do we care about synergy? Do we care about all these kinds of other things that might not be perfectly linear? Uh, or perfectly transparent that could potentially enhance the sound in some way. So it's interesting to me that SMSL has added this sound color feature. Um, and there's a few of them that I think are worth mentioning because they do show a measured difference in second and third harmonic distortion. And for anybody who hears the word distortion and is immediately freaked out, just know this is an option. And that's not distortion like you might think in a really bad sense. Second and third harmonic distortion, for example, are the kinds of things that a tube amp will give you. And so with the sound color function on this DAC, it does give you a number of presets that are meant to add a little bit of that second harmonic distortion, third harmonic distortion, the same way that a tube device would. And I did find this to be slightly audible. Um, and I think, again, depending on the rest of the chain, this might be a function that would see some use. And I honestly think this is more interesting than many of the other functions that are on here because all those other functions are now kind of assumed in many DACs these days. But the sound color function with the rich three and the tube three modes, they do add a little bit of flavor there that if you're looking for that kind of thing that conserves those elements a little bit, then that's worth playing around with. Now, it's not going to be the same as using a full tube amp, right? Or even a hybrid tube amp. It's not the same, it's not on the same level, but it's giving you a kind of flavor that is similar to that in that sense, where when you enable it, you're no longer worried about, you know, having the perfect transparent kind of thing. We don't, we don't care about distortion measurements at that point because we're trying to add a little bit of flavor in there by enhancing the second harmonic distortion there. So apart from just being a balanced DAC, this is also a feature rich balanced DAC with all of those features that I mentioned. And then of course being a Bluetooth, uh, being Bluetooth capable as well. It's, it's fantastic uh, on the features side of things. But how does this sound? Well, this is where we need to talk a little bit about the ESS chip that's in here and what really surprised me about this unit. Normally when you're choosing a DAC in this price range, you'll see names like ESS or AKM or Burr Brown. These are the sort of off the shelf DAC chips that are getting implemented in these devices. And for a lot of people, that choice will depend on the headphones that they're using and the rest of the chain that they have, the amplifier, etc. cetera. Uh, but to describe the, the trend for these differences, and again, this is not always the case, but the general trend traditionally has been something like this, 
The Burr Brown DACs tend to be a little bit on the smoother side. The ESS based DACs tend to be a little bit on the more analytic side. And then the AKM DACs are somewhere in the middle. And often you'll see people talking about these differences leading to something sounding warmer or brighter. And that's not technically the case because they don't really change the frequency response of the headphones that you're using. You could measure it on any of those DACs and they wouldn't change the frequency response in any meaningful way. Um, beyond even positioning or anything like that. Instead, I think it's more the case that, at least subjectively, uh, your attention gets drawn a little bit more strongly to uh, things that token treble frequencies with ESS-based DACs um, and they don't quite as strongly with a Burr-Brown-based DAC. So that's why I'm using these terms smooth versus analytical, uh, because I really think that's a better way of framing it than warm versus bright, because it doesn't actually change the, the, the total balance or anything like that of the headphones that you're using, at least ideally. Now, there is something else we got to talk about with the ESS-based stuff, and that, again, traditionally, there's been a worry in many audiophile communities about what's called Sabre Glare. And ESS-based DACs having a kind of glare to them, uh, where it t tends to be a little bit on the you know fatiguing or grating side of things. And that's always my worry as well, especially if you have headphones that are a little bit brighter. Do you really want to be drawing that much attention to you know the stuff that tokens to tribal frequencies? And oftentimes people will prefer to go with an AKM based stack or a Burr Brown based stack because of that. And ever since I've heard the Matrix Audio X Saber Pro, which is a DAC that is a very high end DAC that I highly recommend, which is also an ESS based DAC, that's been able to demonstrate to me that it's possible to get the benefits of an ESS based DAC, so that more kind of analytic presentation. I think maybe some people might call this resolution. Um, but without any of the drawbacks, without that glare quality. The SMSL SU9 is very close to the Xsaber Pro in that regard. But with all of that said, I still have to also acknowledge emphatically that if you already own a standalone dedicated DAC, going from one DAC to another DAC is not going to make that much of a difference, right? The biggest difference is still always going to be the headphones. Then maybe an amplifier, then, you know, or, or going with a tube amp or something like that. That's where you'll get the real differences. With the DACs, you're getting very subtle differences. And I think that's really it. I mean, because these differences are so subtle, when you do pick up on them, that starts to be the thing that's drawing your attention the most strongly. You start to be really keying in on those, those qualities of the DAC. And that makes you go, oh man, I really wish I had this DAC or this DAC and whatever to pair with, you know, the headphones that you have. And typically I've always preferred DACs that are a little bit on the smoother side because I'm a little bit treble sensitive uh, because I don't like to have, you know, the treble to be as analytic there. And that's why I've often ste steered away from the ESS based DACs because once I started to, you know, key in on that ESS glare, I, I started to be a little bit, you know, worried about that. And then I started to hear these higher end ESS based DACs that didn't have it. And I thought, wow, this is, this is all the benefits of the ESS based DAC without any of the drawbacks. And I think the SMSL SU9 is the best value for that kind of thing, making it a fantastic all-around DAC. This is essentially all you would ever need for a DAC. You know, if you don't have the kind of money for an Xsaber Pro, I think this is exactly the kind of thing that's a little bit more of a value-oriented uh, option for that kind of sound. Now, comparing this to the Topping D90, they both do similar things, and they're both, I think, fantastic. And I'm, I'm kind of shocked at how good both of them are at, you know, the this kind of price. I think the Topping D90 is a little more expensive than this. But for both of them, they're similar enough in as far as the rest of the features goes, you know, where you might just be choosing based on what you expect from that that DAC family. So in conclusion, do I recommend the SMSL SU9? Absolutely. I, I'm actually blown away with both the SMSL SU9 and the Topping D90 that this is possible at such a low price. <laughs> um, and you know, with all the features and all the rest of that stuff, even if it didn't have all the rest of the features like the Bluetooth or the balanced outputs, or you know, the sound color thing, or any of the filters or MQA or DSD, or was in this small package, if it was huge, even if it didn't have all of that going for it, this would still be an awesome sounding DAC. And when you add all the rest of that stuff to it, this just becomes a fantastic value. It becomes a fantastic package. Obviously, yeah, I like the Xsaber Pro better, but that is a very expensive DAC. And this comes in at a much lower, more modest price tag. So if you're looking for value, this absolutely has it. Same thing with the D90. I think it's a little more expensive. And if you want the AKM presentation, go with the D90. If you want the ESS-based presentation with, again, not really much of that glare going on at all, then the SMSL SU9 is really a, a fantastic choice. In 
any case, that does it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.